Shigeo Kageyama. Yeah, there's our boy Mob. Second year of middle school. In one's life, the second year of middle school kicks off a most sensitive time. <laughs> oh boy, does it. Yeah. Sucks. Some devote themselves to their hobbies. <laughs> That's my hobby. Playing Nintendo with one hand, stuffing my face with the other. Some fall for the opposite sex, tasting bittersweet and sometimes unrequited love. Oh. I'm having flashbacks right now. And what was Mob doing during this precious Reading time? One Punch Man. Working as an assistant for a psychic at 300 yen an hour. Smart man. A smart kid. There's time. There's plenty of time to be heartbroken over women. There's no rush. If you're not pining over someone today, you'll be pining over someone tomorrow. It's never too late for unrequited love. I remember adolescence having certain emotional tones that I've never experienced since in terms of its intensity. It's truly a weird time. I was just saying this today, weirdly, in like a language exercise in class, the question was, would you go back to school? And I said that aside from the idea that I wouldn't go back just because I appreciate my life in the way it's went and I'm, I'm grateful for what I have, just as an intellectual exercise, I think one really great thing to do at that age is to really focus on like building skills, dreaming really, really big and understanding that pretty much anything becomes easy if you have enough time. That's sort of the trap of youth. It's like when you're 13 or however old mob is, five years is like a lifetime. You might as well be dead if something takes five years, but five years are gonna pass, 10 years are gonna pass, 20 years are gonna pass. You can really set yourself up nicely if you like fully appreciate the gravity of long-term plans and if you really like conquer that i feel like other things sort of follow but no, i respect the hell out of people who go out of craft early no matter what it is three dollars a day or free or whatever it is mob is doing something that nobody can touch and he's found something that connects well with him it's such a beautiful thing the reason for your curse is born sites born sites commonly referred to as the one click i wish people would talk to me the way that He's talking to his client right now. That would definitely spice things up a little bit. <laughs> Are you guys ready to count? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Numbers. They're fun. Doubts about youth. The telepathy club appears. This is gonna be a good one. I already know. Web porn? They use illegal 18 plus sites to curse your Web porn. I missed that the first time. Who in the hell would believe that giant tub of hogwash? It's not that much of a stretch to believe that web porn could be a curse. Your right shoulder is This guy doesn't even try to deny it. Really has a hold on you. If you think I'm paying for this, you got another thing coming. I already know I have a web porn addiction. Didn't need your input for that. Definitely FLCL vibes. Oh, some of these scenes. This is one of Reagan's special moves. He Massage. The stress from physical fatigue. <laughs> All right, that was uh, more graphic than I needed for for now, but he seems to uh, really put his back into that. Everything feels so much better. May I come again for a follow up? I mean, massage is, is a valuable skill. Eddie, you don't call it a massage fee. Call it the curse to spelling fee. <laughs> I mean, if it works, it works, right? What do you care what it's called? You're getting much better at these massages lately. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. with the... I've been trying different things massage. to improve, like reading up on some new techniques. It's funny that the end result will be that he's just good at everything except for the paranormal. But Mob, of course, seeing it for what it is and also what it isn't. Without knowing much about Mob, except that he's extremely talented, he seems a little odd, but also really sweet. And the reason I say that is because he can see right through Reagan's whole paranormal sales shtick. He sees it exactly for what it is, but he still looks up to him and has faith in him. He's trusting him as like an older brother figure or father figure or something like that, which shows like a, a sweetness and an innocence, you know? And I don't think it's naivety either. I don't think it's stupidity. What it feels like to me at this point is he's actually just seeing Reagan's positive qualities. And I'm guessing that part of that is Reagan actually cares for mom, even if his practices and payment schemes are somewhat questionable. <laughs> Massage is one of those, like, my spiritual skills that gives a lot of dividends. <laughs> that is so, so real. Anyone who has eaten takoyaki knows that scalded mouth feeling. You don't start conversations. Well, I can use a little ESP. It's about a girl. It's about a girl. I didn't have anybody else to talk to. She's doing so this so effortlessly. I'm grateful. Is this really okay? Oh. That's what's been on my mind. I thought it was girl-related. Is pay's too low? Or did he finally figure out that I'm a fraud? <laughs> what? Well, you said it. <laughs> he admits it. I have this sneaking suspicion that there are other things I should be experiencing It is in about... Life. It is about girls. And I feel like Reagan's gonna have a lot to say about that. Is there something specific you want to do right now? Being a band, There's this girl in my class who does not look like a cookie or bell pepper. Why travel when your crush is so close? You're goofing off during the period of your life you can goof off the most, and that makes you a winner in my book. So I say, just keep on being a slacker and make money off me. This is not slacking, though. This is the opposite of slacking. This is way better than school. I can't do it anymore! 
telepathy club fallen on hard times. They're the shadow of the telepathy club they once were. There's only one thing we can do. We've got to find a new member. <laughs> She's so aggressive. Karata, Karata Tome. Damn. So many Takanaka. testicle-like appendages in the show. I just received a submission of resignation from this club. It's the student council! This is so dramatic. The stakes are so high. I got an idea for who we could add to the roster. It's uh, kind of sad that the tele telepathy club didn't see this coming. It's creepy, so forget it. Nah, I've got a job, guys. What's the big deal? If it's abolished, it's abolished. You should be studying. Entrance exams are this year. Ugh. <laughs> that, ooh, speaking of flashbacks, I remember when I dropped out of school, I literally had someone tell me to my face. It was sort of a friend. Not a close friend, but like, we were pleasant. She said, why would you do that? Don't you realize that you'll never amount to anything? <laughs> And she was right. As if that's the metric for evaluating oneself. Success in high school of all things. Of course, I totally forgive her and people like that character just because. I've changed my thinking on this to the point where I actually think it's a really great thing to dedicate yourself to whatever you're doing and trying to maximize it. At one point, I thought escaping that mentality is the ultimate goal, being free. But then I think there's a higher goal, which is like escaping that brainwashing, but also doing your best at it. But without reaching that sort of what I would consider more optimal state, better than just throwing everything away is doing well at it, right? And I think that that is often just a mindset that people need to develop develop in order to have the energy to approach it with that level of intensity. Generally speaking, people who do the best at things are the people who are most obsessed with them, you know, so I can't judge it even though it, like, still has this visceral reaction. Well, are any guys in your club hot? <laughs> this girl's got the right idea, but no, unless you like testicle chains. I feel like they could have done this a lot faster and more effectively if they, you know, I don't know, use telepathy. I him. He's not in any clubs or committees, and he doesn't have any friends or girlfriends. So let's go Homer and all around bum Shigeo Kageyama of year two class one. All around well, bum had to basically throw right. that in there, but Mob is humble. You can call me all the way Tomei. <laughs> all the way Tomei? Hey, what a coincidence. That's my grandmother's name. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why he's single. <laughs> I can't today. <laughs> I'm doing actual you telepathy you actually have in plans? the real world. Mm -hmm. I have to head out to my after-school exorcism huh? job right now. I mean, the exorcism can wait a little while, right? You gotta match my pay rate. Three dollars. Three dollars and I'm in. Is it okay if I'm a little late? Just join and leave. What's the big deal? <laughs> I was actually gonna say the same thing. <laughs> Bam. Look, I really need Kageyama to join today no matter what, understand? A girl, huh? She must be trying to use mob. He's not really the type to play any kind of sport. I like how he just got sucked into this willingly. That sounds shady as hell. And I would know a thing or two about shady as hell. I bet you're just using him to solve cases and get more Mob is becoming you can't do it on your own you're a, a hot item. Night. She's Shut exactly right. Amateur. <laughs> yeah, just sucked right in to the level of middle schooler. Wasn't that far of a fall. Bonds, memories, and friendship. It's not like any of those things will disappear just because a club is abolished. They're using you, trust me. They just don't want to lose their room. I mean, he's not totally wrong, but it also feels like he has some trauma involved in this. Was he not popular? What sacrifices did he make as a kid? Yeah, I feel like, like I was just saying about like people being too invested in something. You get the opposite too. You get the sour grapes people. People who couldn't quite cut it or people who made a choice for whatever reason that they just felt they like couldn't do it. But on some level, everyone wants to be successful. Everyone wants to fit in. Nobody wants to feel like they're missing something. And so people will do their best to like burn down the institutions mentally so that they can sort of like restore their sense of internal balance and self-identity about where they rank exactly in life. But like both extremes are not ideal. I think it's a mistake to think that any one element of life is gonna define who you are and give you value once and for all time, especially something like school. But I think it's also a mistake to discard things outright without understanding that there probably is value within. It just depends on how you make it work for you. You know, like part of me is proud of myself for rejecting the school is life narrative, but I think I could have had that and crushed school at the same time as weird as that might sound. I feel like for whatever reason I end up in a certain situation, there's no reason not to try to do it to the best of my ability and not make excuses for poor performance or not to pretend that I'm better than it because I'm not better than anything. I'm not above like a certain kind of work or education necessarily, you know what I mean? There's an arrogance in that. You know, there's lessons in everything. And sometimes just seeing things through is its own reward on a personal level, just knowing that you showed up. But honestly, the rest of us here just want to lie around and goof off. Oh, it's a goof-off club. School. This is the only time we're gonna be able to do nothing and get away with it. <laughs> so that's what this is about. Mob was just talking about this. This is that sweet life you've been wondering about. You shouldn't drag these things out, Mob. You need to turn Threatened down much? things you don't want to do. Right now, the thing I least want to do is to be dressed up like this. What? Oh, there it is. Kind of mission? Heiso <laughs> Girls Academy. Yeah, this will go over real well. And just dress as girls to infiltrate an all-girls school as men. Reporting from the front gate. Suspicious that fell apart. Requesting backup. 
pretty fast. I didn't want to sneak into the school dressed like this. This kid's got good that was a close instincts. One, huh? Now hurry along and stay away from that freak. Huh? Oh no, he passed. Creeping towards 100 here. Curious what this mid card is. Am I supposed to play rock paper scissors with it? I'll do that next time. You said we were supposed to meet our clients on the roof, but roofs are like alleyways in the sense that they are mythical locations in anime. So much goes down on roofs and alleyways. You're here to see if you can get through to us thugs, is that it? So annoying! Do you really think we're just gonna sit here and let them? That's another institution of these shows. Girl gangsters. That's what Japan is. It's just alleyways, rooftops, and female gangs. First thing you do is get picked on by thugs. Way to go. We're the clients you're here to meet with. I also find it hilarious that Reagan accepted a job from middle school girls. So we went online, looked around, then called the cheapest exorcist in the area, and somehow ended up with you. Yikes. You must be quite the reliable gentleman. Oh, thank you. That was sarcasm, uh, does. She wasn't complimenting you. Are you sure ouch. we can trust him with this? Heartbreak. Adolescence is rough. But let him show you what he can do. That'll change your mind about him. He can put his money where his mouth isn't. Maybe a little. Is he being serious right now? <sighs> Mom is nothing there, but serious. It's nearby. Huh? Are you for real? He's for real. We can trust you, right? Right. You still can't find it? He just became a lot more confident in that response. Something about doing his work gives him that focus. Let's end this. Doesn't look so unreliable now, does he? How did he get so so good? I'm like hoping there's a backstory episode or episodes. Uh... Found you. Is it the basketball? <laughs> You psychic brat. <laughs> Imagine you're just playing a game basketball. Are you going to try to ruin my paradise? If so, then this is what you get. Evil spirit sent ghoul. Mob unmoved. Unafraid. He lost his whole arm. No mercy at all. None. Just dead. Not even a hint of... Remorse? No interest in a tragic backstory? It's just all over now. Demon gets sliced. <laughs> you were pretty reliable after all. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Honestly, you seem to be similar to me. Similar? The way you get nervous around girls. Well, here's that tragic backstory. I finally started to have fun after I died. But I guess that's all over now. Oof. Isn't it? That's interesting, like, reversal. Mob is this genius, unbelievably talented in the world of the supernatural and spirits. Doesn't know the first thing about life. Maybe that's gonna be his journey. Like, it doesn't seem like he's got much to learn about dealing with ghosts or ghouls or whatever. He's got a lot to learn about the normal stuff. Are you living every day to the forest? That question is such a trap. No one's living their life every day to the fullest. I really don't like the concept of live every day like it's your last. I think there's something really great and beautiful in it, which at heart I think is something like focus on what's really important. But like I was saying in the beginning of the episode, I think one crucial concept that's hard to grasp initially but is super important is that of time. There are of course really amazing, beautiful, special, vital things that exist right here in this moment that are always there for the taking. And maybe at a certain level or with a certain focus, that could be one's all. But I also think that it's more meaningful to me to try to grasp the value of things and to see the very facets of life as things that all have something to offer and in that sense I think some of the most fulfilling experiences are those that take time to build those that take a lot of patience and faith even things that require sacrifice of the immediate moment in fact I feel like there's almost nothing truly great without some kind of sacrifice just in a very basic sense to make a choice is to sacrifice all other choices in that moment so I don't know just looking at mob I don't worry about him even though I sympathize with how he's feeling just because you definitely can't say he's wasting time right I think as long as there's that idea of balance as long as there's that idea of like, oh, this is like an area of my life that I feel is deficient and working to address that gradually, he'll have it all. It doesn't have to be all right this moment. It's not a matter of like ditch everything for hedonistic pleasures or a matter of like forego all of life's basics in order to achieve some sort of lofty status or whatever. It's like neither of those things. It's more like an ongoing process of openness and intuiting what your soul is calling you to do. What's wrong? You seem kind of out of it. Something about I got a good feeling about this brother. No, I'm all right. Thanks, though. He's got a heart. Sure. Okay, then. But can we trust him? <laughs> we believed in you, Kagayama. We knew you'd be back. Now, hurry we did up it all. 
audition for. The ghoul, the pervert ghoul, ended up helping him somehow. This will become the club room of the newly formed. That kid looks like Connie. Club. Maybe we could do both. Have any experience in other organizations? Just my job. Do you study? Not particularly. <laughs> my man. Don't you have anything at all you want to do? Huh? Will wasting time after school with soda snacks and video games help you live every day to the fullest? You know, there's a time and a place. Don't knock it till you've tried it. Nothing's off limits. Everything has utility. Just depends on how you do it. Do I have anything I want to do? Does everyone else have something? See, what's beautiful about this is he's way ahead on that front. It's so obvious to him, or it's so clear what his talents are, it doesn't even register as like a thing to do. It's just who he is. I did have a dream. I wanted to confess my feelings to my first love, Tsubomi. Non-pepper girl. When you make frogs float, they start swimming. Oh, they got a history. Oh, wow, that's so cute. I can make the bar all squishy, too. <gasps> You're amazing, Mom. <laughs> when all your talents are only there to impress women. You know what I mean? I'm getting bored. <gasps> your gifts are only as special as they allow you to be, unfortunately. If I can change anything by joining a club, there you go, we got a, like a mission, we got a goal. It's a different Thank mob. You for having me. Body improvement club. <laughs> oh no! What, I mean... What'd you say? It's not a terrible idea. He can be... ripped... and powerful. Not expected to go that way. But that is awesome. I love that episode. There's so much heart in there. It like really captured adolescence and like so many societal things and like hopes and dreams and confusion. Just the weirdness of being that age and the conflicting messages you get. It was so on point in, in a lot of ways, really surprisingly. And I love that everyone's coming at it from different angles and no one quite has the full picture, even the adults. If that isn't the truth, everyone's basically trying to figure it out for themselves while handing down advice. But as a kid, you don't know that. You equate age with wisdom, which later you realize is not necessarily the case. About Mob being confused about what his interests are, it's so clear what it is. He's got an immense gift he's extremely lucky in that way but i sort of get why he wouldn't immediately go to that for all the talk we do of like finding what you want to do and like who you want to be and stuff like that i think i have a couple contrarian takes on this first of all i think that it's great if your interests and natural gifts align with a job but i don't think it necessarily needs to be that way like my natural interest took me to a life living abroad and at first the way i approached that was being an english teacher and teaching is definitely not my thing even though there are certain parts of it I really enjoyed and I tried to do my best at it. It's definitely not like a natural fit, but that was okay because it allowed other things that were a natural fit that really helped me grow in a direction that my instincts were pulling me towards. Like, I think it's okay to focus on one area at a time and I don't think it necessarily matters what the order is as long as it's an organic, open-minded, intuitive process. A thought I have about work or career specifically, I think there are these sort of two domains of that. And I think without deciding what exactly one wants to do, I think it's maybe useful to think about just which domain you want to be in first. And those two lanes are, on the one hand, the sort of conventional track of trading time for money, whether it's an hourly wage or an annual salary, where basically you are employed and you have these duties and you show up and you fulfill those duties and you receive financial compensation. The benefits of that are that someone already does the work of setting it up for you. You bear fewer risks, like if the company goes under, you lose your job, but you're insulated from any larger damage, whereas the owner of the company is not. There's also a likelihood of more concrete work times. You sort of know when you're on and off. It's probably easier to chart a path there. Like for example, if you want to be a lawyer, you sort of know what the path is. Then there's the other domain, which is more chaotic and has greater possible rewards but also much greater risk and that is sort of the domain of unlimited potential but also a high possibility of arriving at zero so for example things like starting a business selling a product benefits of that are that because you're no longer trading time for money your potential earnings are theoretically infinite you can be asleep and people can be buying your product and you've now removed the most limiting element from the equation and so it's possible to really see unbelievably explosive returns, which is probably the greatest draw. There's also the benefit of autonomy, although that could be deceptive. But if it goes well, it's flexible hours, it's being your own boss, it's not answering anyone, not having to go to meetings you don't want to go to, etc. Drawbacks being incredibly high rate of failure, typically a much larger investment, having to have the emotional energy to proceed with something despite no guarantee of success and the possibility of failure at any moment, being totally responsible for everything, and also not having a clear distinction between on-off. That's a difficult thing that people don't know about. But I think conceptualizing career in, in those categories can be useful because if you're going to go the second route, if you're going to go the, the route of unlimited potential or whatever you want to call it, basically everything traditional is not really that important. Like take YouTube, for example, my college degree does nothing at all for YouTube. My work experience does nothing at all for YouTube. So I can't say that like that's the correct way of conceptualizing it, but I think that is a way of conceptualizing it that might illuminate people who are sort of stuck between worlds as to how to proceed in a way that's not wasteful. Because if you're going to go down the sort of 
traditional career path, it's pretty clear like you do really well, you crush it at school, you hone in on a subject, you find out what company you want to work for, you figure out what that company looks for, and you you crush those traits. If you're going to go the other route, then it's really going to be about skill building, things that scale, skills that can apply to a variety of different areas, things like marketing and understanding sales and understanding the variety of tasks that are useful for internet stuff. And then a last thought is that I think people unnaturally try to force themselves where they don't belong. You know, I think people tell themselves they're interested in a certain field or activity, but what they really mean is they're interested in reaping the rewards of that thing and not the thing in itself. Like, for example, people say they want to be actors, but they don't really bother to undertake the process of learning how to act. They're just picturing themselves on the red carpet being photographed. And so the work isn't there. The underlying work that needs to happen isn't there. A really good metric, in my opinion, is how naturally you're already doing something. Like for me, one of the things I've always been interested in is the stock market. And it's not like I decided I'm going to get rich from stocks. And then like I made this whole plan and talked about it a lot and signed up for a course on stocks and read a bunch of books on stocks and then left it there. Like from day one of having that idea, I had a stock account. It's actually been a big part of my life for a long time. Like I waste time doing that. A really great sign that you've connected with a a hobby or an endeavor or whatever is that you have to physically pull yourself away from it for fear of sinking your day into it. You know what I mean? I feel that way about cryptocurrency as well. I feel that way about many aspects of YouTube, not all of them. So Mob already has that. He's going to do just fine. And then it's a matter of like just allowing himself the time to grow up because he's a little kid. Unable Whoops, and credit scene. Whereabouts of the suspicious individual who infiltrated an all girls school <laughs> dressing. The whole area is on high alert. <laughs> well, there's a great teacher on Azuka connection beyond just the blonde hair. 